president uh, asked uh, me and uh, the police commissioner in Philadelphia, Chuck Ramsey, uh, asked each of us on December 1st if we would be willing uh, to co-chair a task force looking at these broad questions mm -hmm. about how to build uh, trust uh, between communities uh, and law enforcement. Uh, I worked on criminal justice policy issues uh, over the course of my career, over um, three decades. Uh, and I was very honored to be asked by the President to do this. Uh, so we're now looking into these issues, uh, holding hearings around the country, uh, and coming up with recommendations, which have to be on his desk in a very short period of time. They're, mm -hmm. they're due March 2nd. So okay. it's like um, half of the semester having uh, all of your semester-long work condensed in a very short period mm -hmm. of time. Well, uh, we were appointed December 1st, okay. but the members of the task force, we have nine other task force members, were not named until December 18th. Mm -hmm. And then with the holidays, uh, we really got started in late December. Our first hearing uh, was held uh, in early January, and now through late January and February, we're holding the other hearings or listening sessions as we call them and uh, drafting uh, the recommendations and report uh, and March 2nd is when we'll have the recommendations on the president's desk. Okay. Um, how many people are on each of the groups for the task force? Well there's just one task force and we have 11 people okay. uh, including the other co-chair and myself. Okay. Uh, I think that the fact that I've worked with a whole variety of groups, I've worked with people in civil liberties, uh, I've worked with people in law enforcement, with the courts, with crime victims groups, with criminal defense, uh, with juvenile justice. Mm -hmm. So I've worked kind of with folks in every part of the criminal justice system over my career, uh, and also with community groups and with civil liberties and the like. So I think that the Attorney General, Eric Holder, for whom I worked for a number of years, uh, and folks in the White House, I suspect thought that I would be good in helping um, with outreach to a number of different organizations. Uh, that's my guess. Uh, and um, it's important because we are doing a lot of listening sessions, and we want to hear a whole variety of viewpoints uh, at the hearings that we've had to date, uh, it's been very good that we've heard from dozens and dozens of witnesses who've provided us a wide array of perspectives, uh, and that's been very valuable to the task force. Uh, what kinds of witnesses have you been listening to? Uh, well, for example, we've heard from a number of police chiefs. We've heard from youthful young people who've been demonstrators, mm -hmm. uh, who've been from some of the communities where problems have, have occurred. Uh, uh, we have heard from people from, for example, the, uh, some of the civil liberties groups. Uh, we've heard from uh, people uh, who have been involved in the criminal justice system in other regards, mm -hmm. a local district attorney, uh, for example. We've heard from line police officers who've been out on the front lines. Um, so it's been a whole variety mm -hmm. of different types of individuals. Um, well, that's a very good question. Of course, I can't speak exactly for the president, yeah. but I think what prompted him to do it was that he wanted uh, to uh, take advantage of the fact that so many people in the country are concerned about the need to ensure that we really are looking at the best practices that exist in bringing communities and police departments together. In a democracy, police can only operate with, in effect, the consent of the people in the community. They, they need the support of the people who are living in that community. 
And this works well in many communities. Mm -hmm. But as we've seen from the incidents in Ferguson and Staten Island and um, in Cleveland as examples, many times there are, of course, a lot of tensions. Mm -hmm. um, practices like good community policing can help make those kinds of incidents much more rare. Mm -hmm. And we need to ensure that good policing practices in fact occur. And that needs to occur, those practices, and by building relationships when tensions don't occur. In other words, you have to make that investment mm -hmm. early and work on it over a long period of time. These problems didn't occur overnight, uh, and they're not going to be likely solved overnight. What I think our report can help do, it's not going to be a quick fix in any way, mm -hmm. but it can help recommend and point to some of the good practices that are underway in some communities around the country. And it can su suggest things like training and some of these good practices that other jurisdictions can, in fact, uh, adopt and implement. One of the things I would point out is that many of these best practices are research-based mm -hmm. and that the criminology department at George Mason University, which is one of the leading departments of criminology in the country uh, and includes some of the top criminologists in the world, in fact, that, that kind of ev those kinds of evidence-based approaches are really so important as we look at the kind of things that uh, police departments can do, not just to reduce crime, but to ensure fairness in mm -hmm. the way that police deal with communities. And uh, so research is a very important part of how we approach um, uh, policing practices. Well, that, that's a very good question because I think some people are cynical. What, mm -hmm. what can a task force do? Mm -hmm. There are examples in a Washington history where some task forces have made a difference. For example, Ronald Reagan appo appointed a task force uh, in 1982 on uh, victims of crime mm -hmm. uh, that had a dramatic influence on helping shape legislation uh, a new federal agency, the Office for Victims of Crime, uh, and practices uh, within uh, the criminal justice system that uh, have had an impact uh, up until today. Really changed the way crime victims mm -hmm. are dealt with in the United States. Now, I'm under no illusion that our task force will have a similar kind of impact, perhaps, but we are thinking about implementation and not just recommendations. Mm -hmm. And but one thing that is important to note is that there are 18,000 separate local police departments in this country. They're not under federal control. So neither the White House nor Congress can simply mandate changes mm -hmm. in practice. This is something and that's why I said there are no quick fixes here. This is something that requires change in culture and change in practice that can be encouraged, uh, but it will take, take some time uh, to effect. Mm -hmm. uh, an emphasis on ensuring what we call procedural justice, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, an emphasis on, on treating people fairly um, even where you're ensuring enforcement of law so that people in a community have a sense that they are being mm -hmm. treated fairly uh, and respectfully. That this is a, a fundamental underpinning of how government in general, not just police departments, need to deal mm -hmm. with the people they serve. Well, we are not, we've not done any independent research okay. on this. Uh, but uh, some of the training uh, that we have heard about uh, 
there is training in the area of what's called fair and impartial policing mm -hmm. uh, that would ensure uh, that uh, police officers uh, are uh, conducting themselves mm -hmm. uh, in a fair and impartial way in dealing with residents of a community. Uh, and that's something that we, I suspect, will encourage to be widely used. Well, I would reserve a comment on the recommendations themselves, uh, okay. but uh, the final comment I would make here is that because the, uh, the, the overall title that uh, President Obama gave us is on 21st century policing, I suspect one thing we will do uh, is, is look broadly at uh, the question of where policing is going in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. But because our timetable is so limited, we will not delve deeply into mm -hmm. those questions, but in fact perhaps give more of a um, kind of pointer, pointer list mm -hmm. toward issues we think should be explored by others uh, down the road.